Right now, a video posted online is calling out a hotel in the Dells after a family says they found used needles in their room. And new video tonight showing the moment deputies arrived to a massive pileup on the interstate in Winnebago County. Plus, a decades-old cold case in Rock County could be solved in a matter of weeks thanks to DNA testing. Hear from the man who discovered the body back in the mid-90s. eight mid -90s. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. A family on vacation in the Dell says they found used hypodermic needles in their hotel room wall. Police are now trying to figure out where they came from. Amanda Quintana has been following this story. Yes, well, Brooke Abel, the woman who posted about this on Facebook, tells me when her boyfriend went to pull from the toilet paper roll in the bathroom at the Polynesian Water Park Resort, the entire holder came out of the wall. Inside, they found about 20 syringes with needles. I looked in it, and I'm like, oh, my God. He started pulling him out. Um, with tissue paper, setting him on the counter, and we took pictures of it, you know, for evidence. When I took the video, it was to show how easy that was to come out where my child or his son could have easily just pulled it out of the wall, reached down, grabbed it, poked himself. Wisconsin Dells police are investigating, saying it looks like the needles were used, they were removed, and the hotel was instructed to inspect all other rooms, but they don't know how long those needles were there. Hotel management is giving police rental records for that room as the investigation continues. The woman told me she's more shocked that her kids could have found these needles, and she's angry at the way the Polynesian Water Park Resort handled it. She says they didn't apologize or call the police, and they simply offered the family an $18 refund. Now, we did reach out to the company that owns the hotel capital vacations they have not responded to our request for comment but when i did talk to them this morning they said they haven't heard anything about it wow all right well we'll keep up on this story yeah. amanda quintana reporting thank you thanks sun prairie police say a driver is cooperating with their investigation after hitting a teen with their vehicle the 15 year old boy was taken to the hospital he's expected to be okay police were called to the intersection of east main and east linaroo drive about 3 30 this afternoon Police are working now to determine whether or not there will be any charges in the case. And we are getting some new video now showing the massive chain reaction crash that happened on I-41 on Sunday near Nina. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office provided body camera videos from the scene. Investigators are still processing a massive amount of squad car video, also phone call video and photos from the crash. More than 130 vehicles were involved. In Sunday's incident, one person died, dozens others were hurt. Let's check on your first alert forecast now. Here's meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Dave? Charlotte, a little bit more snow is possible tonight and into tomorrow morning. The commute could be impacted for some of us as well. We're not seeing too much in the way of snowfall across southern Wisconsin right now, but I expect this radar picture to fill in over the next few hours and we'll see some snow during the overnight hours and for some of us into Wednesday morning as well. Madison, just looking at mostly cloudy skies right now on the WIC TV sky cam. Temperatures are remaining chilly in the low teens in Madison, upper teens in Janesville and single digits in the Dells, but it feels like it's below zero across much of southern Wisconsin when you factor in the wind chill. Here is your day planner as we head into tomorrow. Still some light snow falling for the 7 o'clock hour. Temperatures rising through the teens into the low 20s. And by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, not as cold, which is good news. But we still do have many more chances for snow. And we'll talk about that in your News 3 Now First Alert forecast in just a few minutes. Dave, thank you. A 25-year-old John Doe case might have new life after a recent DNA test could reveal the identity of a man found in Rock County in the 1990s. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter spoke with someone close to the case and joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with the latest. Adam? Well, Charlotte, Gary Gilbank found the remains of a man who would come to be known as John Clinton Doe. Well, he was hunting with his family on their property back in 1995. And since then, law enforcement officers tried to do everything they could to identify the man, but have not been able to. But a breakthrough with a private DNA company could lead to that changing soon. Gilbank says now, even decades later, the man still crosses his mind from time to time. During deer hunting season, I think I thought about every year. Um, and when I was back back on the property um, in that location, I'd always, you know, just pop in my head that, you know, back in there was, uh, you know, where I found that dead guy. The Rock County Sheriff's Office says they won't comment on the issue, at least for right now. 
The reason being they're trying to confirm the results that the private firm called the DNA Doe Project has confirmed themselves. They say that this could be a result of an increase in national data, DNA databases across the country, but they said they said they could have the results of this person's identity as early as in the next couple of months. We'll wait and find out. Adam Dexter reporting tonight. Adam, thank you. The office of an Illinois congressman says he was exercising his right to freedom of speech when he criticized Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Republican Representative Adam Kinzinger is an off-duty member of the Wisconsin National Guard. He tweeted that he was disappointed in the governor's decision to withdraw troops from the country's southern border and appeared on Fox News yesterday to voice support for President Trump's emergency declaration. A spokesperson for the National Guard says it is looking into whether to discipline Congressman Kinzinger and says in the meantime, troops will return to Wisconsin in the coming weeks under the governor's orders. That's a decision that's made at a lot higher level than, uh, than us in the Wisconsin National Guard. Uh, we're proud of our service members who, who answered that call, and, uh, but at this time, we're, we're bringing them home. I'm curious if the governor of Wisconsin ever bothered to go down and see what his men and women were doing in the border to support Border Patrol and to protect the Wisconsin community. Because when I was there, he never showed up. The congressman spokesperson called the idea that a member of the National Guard can't speak freely when off-duty is, quote, absurd. Wisconsin state law prohibits a commissioned officer from using contemptuous words against government officials, including the governor. Evers will call for enacting a nonpartisan redistricting process as part of the state budget he introduced Thursday. Republicans who control the legislature oppose a move and are expected to block that proposal. Evers is expected to propose taking responsibility of drawing the state's political maps away from the legislature and give it to a nonpartisan agency instead. The move comes as Democrats are fighting Wisconsin's current Republican drawn maps in court. A bipartisan proposal aims to lower drug costs by giving customers more information about the true cost of their medication. It targets pharmacy benefits managers, which negotiate drug prices for insurance companies. Their contracts with pharmacies often restrict pharmacists from telling patients about lower cost options by imposing gag clauses. Discussing an alternative price with the patient other than what's through that contract plan. Pharmacists that choose to ignore that potentially are at risk if the PBMs find out about that, of the PBMs can terminate their contract. 33 other states already have passed such legislation. Democrats pushed a similar plan in 2017, but this plan has Republican support, including Republican Senate President Roger Roth, who joins local Democrats John Erpenbach of Middleton and Janesville's Deb Colsty as co-sponsors. The Madison man is facing charges after he was accused of stabbing his housemate two weeks ago. Madison police say 26-year-old Luke Faircloth has been referred to the Dane County DA on a tentative charge of attempted first-degree intentional homicide. Police say Faircloth and a 40-year-old man both rented rooms at the same house in the 800 block of South Midvale Boulevard in Madison. For unknown reasons, Faircloth attacked his housemate. Another housemate called 911 and Faircloth cooperated with officers. The 22-year-old Madison man who's accused of brutally attacking a woman earlier this month is headed to trial. Jerome Winslow in Dane County Court this afternoon for a preliminary hearing. He's facing five felony counts in connection with the early morning attack on February 3rd that seriously injured a 19-year-old UW student. Winslow was arrested 17 days after that attack. Police say surveillance video helped investigators identify him. The Sun Prairie Police Department investigating a threat at the Alternative High School there this morning. Police say a note was found in the school bathroom about 8.20 a.m. at Prairie Phoenix Academy on South Street. The school was evacuated. Students and staff were taken to Cardinal Heights Middle School while officers investigated. Police searched the school with canine officers from the Dane County Sheriff's Office, Madison Police Department, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Nothing suspicious was located. An Edgerton man is on probation, is in trouble with the law again for posting about guns on social media. Officers searched an address on Mechanic Street and found several guns and fireworks inside after a post on Facebook. The Dane County Bomb Squad and ATF were called in to help. Edgerton police say there is no danger or threat to the community. They have not released the identity of this person yet. Officers say this is an active joint investigation and will release more information soon. The Manitowoc man whose case was made famous by a Netflix documentary series will get another day in court. In a ruling filed yesterday, the Wisconsin Court of Appeals ordered the circuit court to allow Stephen Avery to present evidence from a previously undisclosed police report. 
Avery is serving a life sentence for the murder of photographer Teresa Halbach in 2005 and has maintained his innocence. According to court documents, he claims the state violated its statutory duty to preserve evidence and violated his constitutional due process rights. Crews are investigating multiple reports of people smelling natural gas on Madison's west side. The Madison Fire Department said its crews, along with Madison Gas and Electric crews, are in the area of Old Sauk and High Point Roads. Firefighters were called to the area just before noon. Madison Fire crews were cleared from the investigation around 1.15, but MG&E is continuing to investigate the source of the natural gas odor. Well, a little good goes a long way in helping a grieving family. Plus, a new mural honors the fire captain killed during last summer's gas explosion in Sun Prairie. It's story next. The newest mural at Fire Station Number 1 in Sun Prairie honors Captain Corey Barr, who was killed in an explosion in downtown Sun Prairie last summer. This mural was painted by Stephen Brock with the help from Duke Ariel. Barr owned the Barr House restaurant and was the captain of the Sun Prairie Volunteer Fire Department. Abby Barr was co-owner of the Barr House with her husband. The Barr House and several other businesses were destroyed in that explosion. The owner of a Wisconsin bakery donated more than $21,000 to the family of a fallen Milwaukee police officer. Jen Clark owns Jen's Sweet Treats in Cudahy. On February 12th, she donated all of her sales to the family of Officer Matthew Rittner. He was killed in the line of duty while serving a search warrant earlier this month. A million dollar donation is helping the Goodman Community Center focus on increasing graduation rates. Here's a look at three existing programs the funding will help enhance. Social emotional learning and mental health, youth voice and STEM curriculum. The executive director of the Goodman Center says having the resources to dig deeper and fully integrate our curriculum from preschool through high school is really going to pay off. A special ingredient is being added to ice cream made locally. And more snow is in our future. Dave's talking about our chances for the rest of the week. That's next in his first alert forecast.
Eat Street is expanding its delivery service to Janesville this week. The service will start with delivery to 20 popular Janesville restaurants. With the expansion, Eat Street is creating anywhere from 50 to 80 jobs in Janesville. Eat Street is headquartered here in Madison. A Madison restaurant, Swayho, plans to offer CBD ice cream. It's partnering with Green RX to create a pineapple ice cream infused with CBD right now. It's also releasing a Fruity Pebbles flavor to go along with the pineapple. You must be over 18 to order the CBD pineapple ice cream. The post office asking people to clear the snow and ice from sidewalks, your sta stairs, and your mailbox areas. Madison Postmasters say delivery service could be delayed whenever streets or sidewalks present hazardous conditions for carriers or when snow is piled up and plowed against those mailboxes. Residents and businesses with blue collection boxes near their property are also asked to clear them of any ice and snow. And we know, Dave Caulfield, we, we all have these mailboxes that are pretty much mm -hmm. buried sure. in these things. We're yeah. all hoping that we can eventually reduce those piles. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would love that. Uh, unfortunately, Mother Nature not cooperating with me. I think we all wish that uh, winter would just bippity boppity back off for the time being, but it's really not choosing to do that. Seemingly like a fairy godmother just creating snow out of uh, nowhere over and over again. But we do have the snow uh, not really affecting us too much in Madison right now. Much of that uh, light snow still to the north, but I I expect this radar picture to fill in over the next few hours once again and impact us uh, during the overnight hours with some light snow. Also could be some areas of freezing drizzle mixing in at times, but as we can see the forcing a little bit better with this system to the north and east. That's why not much of the area under a winter weather advisory, but some of us are into tomorrow still. We could see some light snow overnight. That's the main message. Madison on the Edgewater Skycam looking at uh, mostly cloudy skies right now. Maybe a little bit of blowing snow here and there. Today's high only 11 degrees. We really didn't move up that much in temperature land. Uh, that's just about 20 to 25 degrees below normal for this time of year. And we're talking well below normal temperatures once again as we get into this weekend. But snowfall has not been below normal. We're actually pretty close to our average seasonal snowfall. All we need is a couple of tenths of an inch and we will most likely get that in this system. And once that does happen, it's the first snowfall season that uh, will be above average in about five years in Madison. So an alert day in the forecast still for tonight into tomorrow could be impacting uh, that snow that is uh, might be impacting the commutes for this evening and especially spots north and east of Madison for tomorrow morning as well. A few slicks spots here and there, but nothing too major, which is good news. 11 right now in Madison, 19 in Janesville, 14 in Watertown, 8 in the Dells. But with that wind chill, it does feel like minus 3 in Madison and in the Dells, minus 4 in Mineral Point. We could be talking about temperatures as cold as minus 10 as we get into this weekend. Let me show you why. So we have another round of polar air on the way. We have a pretty active weather pattern for the rest of this week, and then we'll calm down in the precipitation department, which is good news. But but uh, the cold air comes right in after it, and you can see that round of polar air moving in for the weekend. This is Sunday afternoon. Those deep shades of purple there, uh, not great for our thermometers. And as we get into Monday and Tuesday, that cold air looking to stick around as well. We could be talking near record lows by the time we get to Sunday morning into uh, Monday and Tuesday as well. So for this weekend and next week, uh, it's not really going to uh, be very March like it's definitely going to feel more like winter than spring. Temperature is in the teens for tonight. We're looking at uh, that light snow filling back in over the next few hours, at least according to future track. And by the time we get to tomorrow, we are still looking at the chance of some light snow, generally looking at about one to three inches of snow. Now for tomorrow, I think those temperatures won't be as chilly, which is good news. Highs will be in the mid twenties. So about one to three inches of snow for much of southern Wisconsin, farther to the north and east. We are looking at maybe a little bit more of that snow falling. So. On your 10 day forecast, look at those temperatures as we head into the weekend, especially at nighttime. We're talking about uh, thermometer readings close to minus 10, and we're still staying chilly as we head into the beginning of next week. Well, if you go by the motto, ball is life, tonight is for you. Lots of basketball tonight, the Badgers on the road, and a Capital North showdown for our Prep Mania game of the week. We've got previews of both of them coming up in sports.
Hi, I'm Michelle Corolla. Tonight on the news at nine, tense moments at last night's Madison School Board meeting as the board discussed a number of controversial issues. We'll bring you an update first on Fox at nine. Well, we venture north tonight for our Prep Mania game of the week as River Valley visits Lodi in the first round of the postseason. Winner gets top sheet Prairie Du Sheen. We go live now to Jay Wilson. He's in Lodi alongside John Boyle for a preview. Hey there, Jay. Hi, Melissa, and good evening, everyone, from Lodi. Well, the WIA State Boys Basketball Tournament Series begins tonight in about two and a half weeks. The State Boys Basketball Tournament at the Cole Center and uh, River Valley and Lodi, the 8 and 9 seed in this Division Three bracket, will go head-to-head. -head. John Boyle joins us, and John, the Lodi was at State uh, from 2012, 13, and 14, and you coached Middleton at the State Tournament in 1998, the first year at the Cole Center. What's it like to get to the state tournament? Uh, it's just an unbelievable feeling. You know, it'll, it's the high point. If you make it that far, it's a high point in your athletic life for the most part. You know, it's, it's great. Kids get excited. You know, the communities get excited. They're, you know, they're starting to, hour before game time here, we already got people coming in. And it's, uh, you know, these two teams are pretty evenly matched. I think Lodi won the first game by six. And... Uh, this is this will this will be a good game, and I, I like I said before, I will give the edge to the team with the most seniors that are playing because seniors tend this time of year tend to have a little bit more of a sense of urgency. Yeah, and and you know both of these teams have losing records. It, it's a long shot if either one would make it, but hey, you're saying there's a chance. And hey, you, you got a chance. Everybody's got an equal chance when you start out here, and it's you know stranger things have happened. Yeah, like like us being on television. Yeah. <laughs> And it's going to be 7 o'clock start on Channel3000.com. We'll be live with River Valley and Lodi in Division 3. Melissa, back to you. Oh, thanks. Oh, we love you guys. Whatever. Four games left, meanwhile, left before the Big Ten tournament. That means four chances 
to make a push for a better seed and not having to play in the first two rounds in Chicago. The Badgers are currently fifth in the Big Ten. They'll face Indiana tonight at 8 p.m. on ESPN. Wisconsin has won their last two straight, and they need that victorious energy going into these last few games. Momentum is key, you know, like going into the Big Ten tournament. If you if you have that, um, I feel like, you know, you're, you're liable to make a good run in the tournament, even though all the teams are you know, uh, giving each other their, their best shot, I guess you could say something like that. And it, it's tough, but I feel like momentum helps you. Meanwhile, a few familiar faces in spring training today. Zach Davies and Chase Anderson both making appearances on the mound this afternoon against the Padres lineup that does not yet include Manny Machado. In the second inning, Manny Pena getting a ball for Aaron Perez, scrambling and crosses home plate on the air. Brewers up one zip. After that, Chase Anderson shaking off some winter rust here. Gives up homers in the third and fourth. Brewers lose 3-1 to one, the final. Well, quite a moment last night at the game between the Mavericks and Clippers. L.A. head coach Doc Rivers calling a timeout with nine seconds left in the game, then took over the PA mic to recognize Dirk Nowitzki, who is in his last season in the NBA. Dirk looking emotional as the crowd cheered, clapped, giving him a standing ovation, and he's really just kind of enjoying, I think, these last few moments. Look at his face there. He just loved it all. Class move it by was, Doc Rivers, right? Marquette nice. guy, right? Mm-hmm. Class move, those Marquette folks. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Indeed. Final check, Dave. All right. Well, we have some more light snow on the way for tonight. Nothing falling across southern Wisconsin right now, but I expect that radar picture to fill in as we head later into this evening. 10-day forecast showing more chances for snow and then a cold weekend ahead. Thanks for joining us for News for Now at 6. Have a great evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.